All right, so today's video is on the Russian RGO grenade. Um, there is also an R a Russian RGN grenade that everything I talk about here should match the same for the other one. The only difference is this is a steel body made of four hemispheres, basically, apparently. And the other one's just a single aluminum or aluminum body. So this one here has further, I guess it would be kill radius on it, versus the other one. But both of them you don't want to be anywhere near when they go off. So we'll just start with this then. <clears throat> so first thing is, most people probably recognize this from video games like Escape from Tarkov. Uh, because they are pretty predominant in them. In this case, these grenades here are both time delay and impact. So the main function of it is impact. But if for whatever reason it doesn't go off or it lands and hits the ground too early, there is a delay before it goes off. And I'll show you basically how they work. There's not much interesting about the actual body and what you see here on the grenade. But it is, the fuse in it is a little more complex than what you're used to seeing. And uh, we'll get into that. To start with, this is basically a 60 millimeter diameter grenade. Give or take a couple millimeters, but comparing it to a an American grenade in this case a dummy but it is approximately the same size with a much larger fuse on it obviously since it has the impact feature on it it's going to be a larger fuse but we'll get into that the fuse itself i'm in the process of repairing this thing because it's in pretty bad shape but the fuse is all made out of plastic as you can see the body of the grenade is, as I said, steel. Got some writing on it. And apparently the texture on the bottom here is to be able to differentiate the two in the dark. Is that true? I don't know. Inside, you can't see it because there's not enough light. But it's all um, grooved, basically, to help with splitting don't know how well that actually works, but that's what the design was for. So this will get out of the way now because we don't need that anymore. <clears throat> First part of this grenade works a lot like the pretty much any other grenade you see. You hold on to the lever here. You would pull the pin out. And then when you release it, the firing pin basically, turn around and hit a primer composition. That's pretty much where it ends on this, the similarities. There are some weird things that this one does now. So basically there's no spring on it right now. It's there, but I disconnected it because it'll just, well, never really connect it because it'll destroy the plastic if I even let it set. As you see, it sits up like that with the, when it's released, this swings around. Unfortunately, the spring behind it. Swings around and hits right in the middle there. In that piece of plastic, there is a, I guess, friction sensitive mix of primer of sorts. And that ignites it, which then, this is removed, I've already paid, taken the middle parts out, which then sets off this and Gotta remove it from the front here. But if I push it out the back here, I'll just remove the firing pin. All right. So this plastic piece, once the firing pin hits it, it will, if it doesn't stop fighting me, pop off.
through the blast it'll pop off and come out a bit in here you three see three holes we'll get to what those are next here all right to start off we've got these parts which is this is the main body of the fuse this is the weighted ball which seems to be an epoxy of sorts with a bunch of lead little walls in it i guess it's cheaper than I don't even know why it's made like that, but I assume it's too cheap because it's a lot cheaper to manufacture. These are those three pieces that were in the holes that were on the main body of the, or the external cover of the fuse. Two of them are made the same. One of them is just a through hole. So this one here, there's just a hole right through the whole thing. These ones here, you'll see that in a minute, but it's got a little hole here. And inside, as you saw, you've got a little pin like this and a spring that goes in there like that. How these are made is that that's installed in the front end of it where the little hole is here and behind that behind the little nub that's here is a delay basically it's a little uh, not capsule but uh, almost like a delay train designed for two reasons one it does give it a delay second once it's burnt out of the way it's able to, using the spring here, release. So this is able to move forward. So it holds it in place and it has a, it gives it a bit of a delay. Both of these are made the exact same way. And they both have that delay in it. And as I said, now that you've got these three, that their heads are in here. So you took, when that primer fired, it lit the three delays that are in here. Those two, like I said, are exactly the same. That one there is a three and a half to four and a half second delay. Russian, don't count on it being exact. So, that, like I said, is the only one that's different. Moving on to the actual part here. What you have is basically, I guess they consider it a shutter of sorts, but it's spring activated and as you see it moves into position like that with the spring it's held in position like that and those little things there protrude through here so you have the piece normally screwed into the into here going through here with a little pin And as you see, little hole there, little hole on this one here. So, when the delays haven't burnt yet, your pins, one of them blocks here, and one of them sits in front of the other protrusion. I'm assuming that's a safety feature on it just so that uh, in case one doesn't do what it's supposed to, burns too quick, some sort of issue, and releases, you don't get killed. Increases your chances of not dying from one of these. So anyway, it burns through, this pops up, this one should pop up around the same time, which then lets your piece here move into the center. In that center hole is a primer or a priming mixture and that now that it's centered it's lined up with a firing pin so before you use your grenade this is no longer not centered so it's off to the side like that if you drop the grenade nothing's going to happen even if try to get this 
nothing's going to happen. What you see underneath here, uh, I can't get into focus, I don't think, but is the firing pin. You can see it from the side here, how it works. Thank Thankfully, they made this thing clear, so it's easier to see. So, as you see, it can go right up when this thing is centered. And that's what ignites the grenade itself. Say you threw the grenade and it bounced off a tree, it hit the ground, and it sat on the ground before these things had time to burn out. Or for some unlucky reason, it doesn't actually set it off. That third one, which has that delay in it, will now burn through. And that will go ignite into the hole here. And instead of igniting the igniting this, it'll just directly ignite the detonator that's inside here. Causing the that to explode. And then the main body, obviously, to go off with the explosive that's in it. So, the way it's shaped here is why it works. So the ball, no matter what direction this thing lands, it's able to basically detonate the grenade. So the ball's either pushed up against the side, which pushes it upwards, because of the shape, like I said, you're rolling. It's not a flat surface. So depending on where it goes, the ball will always still push off the, the primer and set it off. And that basically is how it works. This thing here is just a uh, cover. It sits on top. It protects everything else from being uh, set off. But that's how this grenade works. It's more complex, obviously, than other grenades because of that. But in the end, it's not a very complex thing. The Russians like to use burning delays for everything. As you saw in my RPG video, that's how they ignite everything. That's how they get their delays going. So in this case, it's the same thing. They're basically using a primer to ignite the three of these, which then is going to run the grenade. So if you throw it, it's in the air for one and a half seconds, about one to one and a half seconds. It arms, it hits the ground. The ball pushes the firing pin up, setting off this move well, setting off the primer that's in this which then ignites the detonator the if it didn't do that then like i said the delay that actually burns through will do the same thing which is why you're able to see some videos or pictures of these things tied to trees with trip cords on them or trip wires i guess because they will still be detonated even if they don't move after three and a half seconds This isn't easy to do, so we'll do this as quickly as possible. My drill bit there is simulating the delay still in place. And as soon as the delay burns out after one second about, the spring is able to push it away. And then both of them do the same thing here, obviously. And then this is able to line up center. And All right, so there you have the... RGO grenade. RGN, as I said, same idea. Now that it's all back together, it doesn't want to sit. Anyways. So, there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Uh, not much more I could tell you about it. I think it was developed for Afghanistan. Because the Russians were finding that their standard grenades with the time fuse would be rolling back down those nice mountains that uh, they were fighting in. And they were getting uh, issues with their own people getting hurt or killed. And the fact that the other ones were delay the Afghanistan fighters would be able to get out of the way in time and hide behind stuff back in holes and stuff or throw the things back apparently so 
this grenade was developed apparently for those reasons. If you need any more information on this thing here, you could ask me certain things in the comments. Uh, LexPev used to be my site that I'd get information on. A lot of times, if I'm not just doing a standard search, uh, there is a new or rather new site now that has a pretty good amount of information on it. It's Cat UXO. Look it up. You can't miss it. And I think it was designed basically as a help for EOD technicians and basically civilians in war zones not to get hurt with what they find. Basically something you could use the categories to search with. Uh, because most of it goes through that. From what I've seen, the search is a lot easier just to go through the types of ordnance all the way through and figure out countries and stuff like that. It allows you to search for through pictures. Uh, but it also does have a lot of free information and more information, obviously, if you pay or whatever. So you don't have to pay. You get the basics. And if you pay, you get some more information, depending on the level that you pay. Uh, obviously not supported by them, but I did do this show just because they do provide quite a bit of information. And if it wasn't for them right now, I wouldn't basically have a a decent source that I could trust the information on. So thanks again for watching. If uh, you do have any other questions, like I said, feel free to leave them. I'll try to answer them. I'm usually pretty good with questions. Sometimes if they're repeat questions, I might not answer right away because uh, somebody actually did ask already. So you just have to look down in the comments. But apart from that, if you like this kind of content, obviously I'm gonna ask you guys to subscribe. I do make videos slowly now because I have a lot of things to do, unfortunately, including work. So I don't get them out as quickly as I should. But hopefully you do enjoy the ones I do send out. So thanks again for watching and uh, have a good one.